Good morning, today is Wednesday the 27th of January. Um, today we're going to explore those myths a little bit further and read a new one today about Perseus. Um, and then we're going to think about those aspects of what makes it a myth. So we're going to look for the features and complete a worksheet about it. Um, I will read the story of Perseus and Medusa to you, however there is a copy of that story on the website as well. And of course, for our worksheet, you might want to use some of the other examples of myths that you read yesterday. I recommended that you read Pandora's, um, that you read Pandora's box, and also Theseus and the Minotaur. So we might be able to use those myths to help us as well when we're completing our features worksheet. Let's take a look. We begin the lesson with um, just a recap of what is a pronoun. So I'd like you to go to BBC Bite Size. As you know, they have lovely interactive resources on here. Should be some fun for you to just remind yourselves of what a pronoun is and how we use a pronoun to avoid repeating the same noun over and over again. So if we're going to write about a person and we use their name, so if we're going to write about Pandora, um, we don't want to keep saying Pandora was tempted to open the box, so Pandora kept looking at the box and then Pandora made a decision that she would open the box and Pandora did open the box. Instead, you would use pronouns like she or her um, and it, that just means that you avoid repeating the same noun over and over again. So take a look at that, that's your starter today. When you've done that, let's talk about what this list is showing us. So this list is the features, this covers off the main features of a myth. So when we think about a myth, the genre, the story type, um, we know that myths are set in the past, very often set in the ancient times, not always set in ancient Greece. We have myths um, and legends from various other sources as well, and you saw that on the website yesterday with that huge list of myths that you could choose from. Lots of them came from other countries as well. Always set in the past though. Um, they ha often have monsters or mythical creatures in them. They can have a moral. So I've just added in here what a moral is. So a moral is a lesson that we can learn. It's a lesson that can be derived from a story or an experience. So it's really something that when we finish reading a story, we think about what it's telling us, usually telling us to always remember to do this or make sure we never do that. So it's about learning from the story. And then often a moral, um, sorry, often a myth will explain strange or important happenings. So um, we have these wonderful reasons for why the world is as it is. And as you will see, with ancient Greek myths in particular, it includes gods and goddesses, of which the ancient Greeks had plenty. Hopefully, in your history learning last week, you, are, um, you have learned about lots of the gods and you are familiar with some of their names and who they were and what sort of personality they had. Includes the use of magical powers. It's what makes myths so exciting to read and watch and listen to. They feature danger and revenge, and sometimes the characters are heroes. Okay, we're gonna read the story of Perseus and Medusa. There's a story sheet saved to the website, and we're going to think about all of these features as we read it through, so that at the end, we can go on to complete the worksheet where we say and give examples for each of these features of a myth. I'm going to read it through to you, Perseus and Medusa. Perseus lived alone with his mother. His father had died when he was a baby. The king of the land was evil and nobody liked him. 
The problem was that he wanted to marry Perseus's mother. Perseus told the king that this was not possible. The king was angry and thought of a plan to get rid of Perseus. Bring me the head of the monster Medusa, said the king, and I will not bother your mother again. Medusa and her sisters, the Gorgons, were scary indeed. Instead of hair, they had snakes coming out of their heads. If anyone so much as looked at their faces, then they would become stone. Perseus needed help to defeat Medusa. He went to see a wise man. The man gave Perseus a shield, which was just like a mirror. Next, he gave him a crystal sword strong enough to cut off the monster's head. The wise man told Perseus that he would also need some flying sandals, a helmet to make him invisible, and a silver bag to put Medusa's head in. The wise man said that Perseus should go and find the three witches that lived at Mount Atlas. They would give him the objects that he needed. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. At first, the witches would not help Perseus, but then Perseus noticed that they only had one eye between them, and so he quickly grabbed it. He refused to give it back until they agreed to help him. The witches finally gave in. They got their eye back in exchange for the helmet the sandals and the silver bag. Perseus strapped on the sandals and flew to the Gorgon's cave. He put on his helmet and now he was invisible to the Gorgons. Medusa did not notice Perseus flying into the cave. Perseus drew his crystal sword and lunged towards Medusa. He remembered that he must not look at her because he would turn to stone. So he used his shield as a mirror and cut off her head. Medusa was finally dead and Perseus had the head in the silver bag to prove it. Perseus returned to the evil king. The king did not believe that Medusa was dead. Show me the head, he demanded. Perseus took the head from the silver bag and the evil king was instantly turned to stone. He had looked at the face of Medusa. Perseus, his mother, and everyone in the land rejoiced. Okay, so you've got your own copy of this so you can go back through, highlight bits that you need to, because I would like you to take a look at this worksheet. So this worksheet is about showing me that you understand those features that we've talked about, the different features of a myth. So on the worksheet, um, first of all, I'm asking you whether it's set in ancient times, and if so, can you find any proof or anything in the story that you can write into this box to show me? Um, does it have monsters, mythical creatures? The story we've read definitely does. We've got Gorgons. We've got Medusa. Does it include gods and goddesses? I don't know if that was actually mentioned in the story. We would have to go back. We've got a king and we've got an evil king. And I think the gods probably are responsible for a lot of this. Whether it's mentioned in this story, I'm not sure that it is. Um, you would need to go back through and see if there's any mention of gods and goddesses in this version of the story. Does it include the use of magical powers? Well, I seem to remember that Perseus was given some items to help him defeat Medusa. Did any of those give him magical powers? Was he able to do anything special? Go back to the story, see if you can find any examples or evidence that shows that he did. Maybe a sword, there could be some other things as well. So you would write that in the box. Moving down to the bottom boxes, does it feature danger or revenge? 
Well, there's a few parts to that. Danger, yes, there is, um, of course, the battle that Perseus has with Medusa and the danger that's posed. Can you remember what it is that Medusa can do if you look at her? So you might want to go back to the story, take a look. What's the danger if you look at Medusa? Write that in there. Is there a story of revenge? Well, the king's not a very nice one, is he? What happens to the king at the end? Could that be some revenge? Then we move on to our next box. Some characters are heroes. Who could the hero be in this story? Have a think. Is there somebody in the story, a name that you can write in the box, somebody who saves the day, who um, conquers the quest and puts right something that is wrong? Have a think. Who could that be? Anything strange or important, important happenings, some strange things, have a think again, go back to the story. Um, does our story of Perseus and Medusa explain anything that happens today? I'm not sure it does so much. Um, I can't think immediately of how this story tells us how, um, how something happens today in the way we live. Not sure, maybe about being nice, but then that fits in better with our last box. Does this story have a moral? Well, yeah, I would say the moral here is that if you are not very nice to people, perhaps bad things might happen to you. There's also a moral about bravery. Um, there's also some thinking here about being clever and um, thinking through a plan to do something. So there's all sorts of morals and lessons that can be learned from this story. Have a think as well about the stories that we read yesterday. Pandora's box, there's definitely um, mentions of gods in that story. Um, there's definitely um, a moral in that story. And actually that story does try to explain some important happenings the story of pandora's box does talk about how despair and illness and um other terrible things that get unleashed on the world how that happened and it happened because pandora opened the box so with that myth definitely we can write some things in the box. So you might find that you want to split these boxes and talk about two of the myths, maybe Pandora's box, today's example of Perseus and Medusa, maybe yesterday's example of Theseus and the Minotaur. You could perhaps draw a line so that you talk about Perseus and uh, Medusa, but also leave a space for Pandora's box or Theseus. Or you could print out two sheets and complete a sheet for each. It's up to you. Have a think about how you can go back to the stories and come up with examples that fit these different features. Okay, have fun with it. If you come across any other ancient Greek myths, there are plenty out there, then you feel free to use those as well. Anything that really grabs your interest or you think, yep, yeah, that definitely um, has a hero in it or it definitely features danger, then you might want to use that one. Okay, have some fun with it and good luck and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. So here is another version of the story of Pandora's box. I'm just going to read it to you just in case you haven't got access to the stories that I've recommended on the website. So this is the story of Pandora's box. How dare you, Zeus bellowed at Prometheus. He was furious with him for stealing fire from the gods to give to the people on earth. I'll punish you later, he growled. First, I'm going to teach these people you're so fond of a lesson they won't forget. Zeus called the other gods and goddesses before him. I need you to help me make a special woman, he said, and he told them his plan to punish people. They set to work at once, shaping a woman from clay. The goddesses showered her with beauty and dressed her in the most exquisite gown. She was absolutely perfect. 
Then Hermes added the finishing touch, putting curiosity in her heart. Zeus named the woman Pandora. Take her to Prometheus's brother, Epimetheus, he ordered Hermes, and took out a box. Give him this, he said. He's such a fool that he'll never suspect a thing. So Hermes flew with Pandora to Epimetheus. Here is a wife for you, he said. She is a gift from Zeus. Thank you, gasped Epimetheus. He gazed at Pandora, hardly able to believe his good fortune. And so is this, said Hermes, handing him the box. Keep it safe, but do not ever open it. Soon Epimetheus and Pandora were married. The two of them lived happily together and they never exchanged a cross word. The world was a wonderful place to live in then. No one became ill or old and no one was unkind or unpleasant to one another. But in this perfect world there was one thing that weighed on Pandora's mind, the unopened box. The more she thought about it, the more curious she became. Let's just have a little peek, she suggested to her husband. No, we were told never to open it, said Epimetheus, scared of what would happen. He knew better than to risk making Zeus angry. Every day Pandora begged him to open the box and every day he refused. Then one morning, when Epimetheus had gone out, Pandora crept into the room where the box was and stared at it. Finally, she made up her mind. She would open it. Hardly daring to breathe, she lifted the lid. A terrible wailing filled the room. She tried to slam the lid down, but it was too late. Out of the box streamed a cloud of hideous winged creatures and with them all kinds of horrible things. There was hate, jealousy, cruelty and anger, hunger and poverty, pain and sickness, old age and death. One after the other, the creatures flew out of the window. As the last of them disappeared, Epimetheus burst in and he saw the open box. What have you done? He screamed so loudly that he almost frightened himself. He and Pandora stared at one another in shocked silence. It was the first time he had ever been angry with her. Just then they heard movement inside the box. Fearfully, Pandora peered into it. As she did, something pretty and delicate fluttered out. It was hope. It hovered for a moment in the air and then flew out of the window. From that day on, the world would never be the same again. People would suffer all kinds of terrible things. But because they had hope, they would never despair. So there you have it. That's one version of Pandora's box. I hope you enjoyed it. There's lots in there that um, is re that, that gives really good examples for our features of a myth. So if you think about all of the different features about gods and goddesses and magic and revenge and morals and lessons to be learnt, then this is a great story to use. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so I thought it would be quite useful if I went through um, one of these features of a myth worksheets. And as you can see, I have completed it based on the story of Perseus and Medusa. As I have said before, there are different versions of the story and different versions will give different details and they will mention different things or leave out different things. So don't worry if you have read a version or seen a version that's different to mine. Um, this really is just to give you an idea of what I would want you to complete in your, um, on your worksheet. So for Perseus and Medusa, I said, well, yes, it is set in the past, ancient times, it's set in ancient Greece. Um, monsters, yeah, I put, we, we know that um, the whole point of the story is that Perseus sets out 
to cut off the head of the monster Medusa, who is one of the Gorgons with snakes as their hair. Um, he comes across the three witches, who of course share one eye. Includes gods and goddesses. I think in this story, the one that I read, there isn't actually a mention of a god or a goddess. However, um, there is a wise man who is responsible for giving Perseus some of his gifts, these magical powers, the sandals, the helmet, and the silver bag. So I've included those in this end box here. Um, looking at the bottom boxes here, features danger or revenge. Definitely, this is a story all about the king, the nasty, evil king, who was unkind to the subjects of his land wanted to marry Perseus's mother and so actually set Perseus out on a quest that he knew would probably kill Perseus. So Perseus was, um, so the king was actually really unkind. So you could say that this is a story of revenge because in the end when the king is um, killed, when he takes a look at Medusa's head, it's sort of a story of revenge. He gets his comeuppance, doesn't he? There's certainly some danger in the story. Perseus has to not only face the three witches, but he also has to fight Medusa and brave the evil king. Some characters are heroes, Perseus being the obvious hero. Because he saves his mother, he gets rid of the king. Does this story explain strange or important happenings? I don't think it does. I couldn't think of anything here. Does it have a moral? Yes, it has a moral. Be nice and be careful what you wish for. The king demanded to see the head of Medusa. Well, he certainly did see the head, much to his loss, because of course he was then turned to stone. So um, that gives you an idea of what to complete for one of the stories. Should you then want to go on and complete it for a second story, um, one of the things that I was thinking you could do is either print out a second sheet, but to save paper, don't. To save paper, why don't you perhaps use a different colour pen and um, just use a different colour pen to fill in the boxes. So if I do a second story, I'm going to do Pandora's box. And again, if I go through, is it set in the past? Yes, it is. I'm just going to write yes. Um, are there any monsters or mythical creatures? Not as such, although um, when Pandora opens the box, lots of hideous winged creatures fly out. So I think I might mention those. Hideous winged creatures. You can see that I clearly have... Um, Pandora's box written in red and Perseus and Medusa I've done in black so you can see it's two different stories. Does, per does Pandora's box include gods and goddesses? Yes it does, lots of them. Beginning with Zeus who actually was very unkind in this story because he wanted to punish Prometheus. Prometheus being another of the gods, he wanted to punish Prometheus because Prometheus gave fire to human beings, to the mortals. So he did it by including Prometheus' brother Epimetheus and other gods that are actually mentioned are um, Hermes is mentioned in the story that I've read, but lots of the other gods and goddesses get involved as well. Use of magical powers in it, all I could think of really there is, um, yes, the gods do create Pandora, so that's a magical power, they create Pandora, but also, of course, they create the box, which we know from reading the story, that box is full of magical things, not all of them good. Does it feature danger or revenge? It does, this is all about revenge. This is Zeus wanting his revenge on Prometheus. So he sets up this whole terrible situation for Prometheus's brother Epimetheus to marry Pandora and he sets them a trap. Some characters are heroes. In this one it's not so easy to see a hero because nobody really saves the day. I suppose you could say um, that Hope is the hero and who released Hope? Well I suppose that makes it Pandora. Perhaps Pandora is a hero in this story. Perhaps Epimetheus is a hero. 
he has, um, throughout the story, tried to stop Pandora from opening the box. Maybe that makes him a hero. It's strange and important happenings. Does it explain them? It does. <coughs> Excuse me. It does really well. So, sadly, we live in a world where um, we have jealousy, we have wars, we have death and despair. All of these things, according to the ancient Greeks, were um, unleashed upon the world when Pandora opened the box. So perhaps all these terrible things, hate and despair. If you remember from the story, before Pandora opened the box, they all lived in um, blissful happiness and there was no hate, there was no death. So um, maybe these terrible things are blamed on Pandora. Does it have a moral of the story? kind of does doesn't it it's all about curiosity and being happy with what you've got so um that gives you an idea of a second way for a second story rather that you could complete your sheet i hope that's useful